This is the permanent mold that I used to produce the flywheel for this little Stirling engine. It's about three and a quarter inch in diameter and the permanent mold has simply been machined out of aluminum and you pour the flywheel just like you would uh, weights for fishing. Works real good. Here's a couple of the patterns that are used to produce the castings for this Stirling engine. They're made of wood. This is the base casting hollowed out on the bottom, or base pattern rather. Here's a finished casting made of aluminum ready to be machined. This is the pattern for the cylinders. It's a split pattern made in two halves so it can be pulled out of the sand. This is the power piston end and we have a core print on each end and a sand core is placed into the green sand mold. This is actually a core print over here too, but instead of putting in a sand core, I placed the steel tube right into the sand mold prior to filling it with aluminum. That way uh, we already have our passage for the displacer. Here's the finished engine. I'm going to run it for you in a second, but I don't want it to get too hot to touch. This is the power end, the power piston, power cylinder, and uh, this is what actually produces the power that rotates the flywheel. The other side is the displacer side, and all this does is move hot air from the hot end to the cold end. There is no power produced here at all. To give you a little idea of the scale, here's a six inch ruler. And this, uh, there's a passage drilled between the two halves so that the pressure differential can be moved from this side over to the power piston side. I'm going to put the uh, flame under there now. It takes a few moments to preheat. That's nothing more than sterno, like you would use for cooking. It's kind of like a gel. might be hard for you to tell that there's a flame there now, but it's plenty hot. This end needs to be hot, and this end needs to be cold. Now, actually, this engine is cooled by air. It's not, I have made some water-cooled ones as well, but this one is cooled strictly by air, and the heat is conducted uh, across here and into the base and dissipated it from that point. Should be hot enough now. I'll see if it starts. If you're wanting to run, it's not quite hot enough. You can hear it chugging away a little bit. There isn't a lot of heat produced, or uh, I should say, a, not a lot of power produced by a, a Sterling engine. It's just a, a fun thing to make and fun to watch. There she's running. I'll rotate her one or two times for you. Check YouTube from time to time as I put on some more of the little engines that I built over the years. This is one I built quite a while ago. When you want to turn it off, just take it away from the heat, but it will continue to run for a little while on the residual heat. Snuff my flame out. Not for children to play with because it gets very hot on this end. Watch YouTube as myself, my pseudo name is Tubalcane2.